Food helps sustain human life, and man's dependence on it has propelled us to constantly look at ways to better obtain and store food supply. From the early years of hunting and gathering, methods have changed and developed over time in many societies across the globe. Today, it is quite common to see many of our food crops planted in massive fields to cater for growing population and demand. However, natural and man-made disasters like cyclones or the introduction of new pests and diseases can cause great damage to crop yields one way of ensuring that important crops are not wiped out is through the collection of various crop species and varieties which are deposited in a type of bank, a gene bank. The Secretariat of the Pacific Community's Center for Pacific Crops and Trees, CPACT, based in Suva, Fiji, is home to the region's first internationally recognized gene bank. Originally established as the Regional Germplasm Center, RGC, in 1999, it took on the name CPACT nine years later to also reflect the work being carried out on the importance of trees for food security and income generation in the Pacific. It is here that we've come to gain insight into what a gene bank looks like and the type of work it carries out. To help answer some of our questions, we meet with Valerie Tuya. Valerie is CPAC's curator. A curator is someone who looks after a collection, like at the library or museum. In this case, Valerie looks after hundreds of different accessions of crop and tree species stored at CPAC. CPAC's major role is the sustainable conservation management and effective utilization of plant genetic resources in the Pacific. That is uh, CPAC conserves specific diversity and imports diversity important for food and nutritional security, uh, climate change adaptation, as well as for income generation. As luck would have it, Valerie has agreed to take us on a short tour of the facility. This is quite a rare and exciting opportunity because the work they carry out here has to be done in a very controlled, clean and sterile environment, so visitors are often limited. Now that we're properly dressed for the occasion, we can begin our tour. As Valerie explains, priority at CPACT is given to the conservation of the region's staple crops, such as taro, yam, sweet potato, banana, cassava, and breadfruit. CPACT currently houses over 1,000 accessions. These are kept in growth rooms, where temperature and light is carefully controlled and monitored to ensure the best growing conditions. Conserving plants in a controlled environment is an alternative method for storing plants outside of the natural environment. In this way, crops are stored in a small space in a sterile environment uh, without major risks from pests and disease outbreaks and also extreme climatic conditions. CPACT uh, conserves the largest uh, global collection of over 1,000 accessions of, uh, of taro from the Pacific and Asia. The center also uh, expects to receive more diversity of taro from other countries uh, in Europe, um, Africa and Caribbean, which will Im help improve the diversity of, of our taro in the Pacific. The more diversity we can access, the more choices uh, we can have as to, to which crops we can grow. A closer look at one of the tiny containers reveals something very interesting. These tissue culture samples are not planted in soil. Instead, they grow with the help of a semi-solid substance called the medium. 
How is this possible? We're told that the medium is made right here at the center, so we move on in search of answers. When plants grow uh, in gardens or in our fields, they're able to make their own uh, food through a process known as photosynthesis. Uh, but in the lab, in the containers or in the laboratory, they are unable to do this. So we need to supply them with food that they are able to grow in. Uh, we, in the culture medium, we supply them with macronutrients and micronutrients, which are also present in soil. So. Uh, this is just applied to them to help them grow. We grow them in medium and not in soil because uh, um, the environment needs to be sterile. All our apparatus and medium are all sterile, even the casting utensils, they all need to be sterile. Uh, the soil, on the other hand, uh, is not sterile. It has microorganisms such as bacteria or fungus that uh, would uh, contribute to contamination in the lab. When the medium is ready, the explants or shoot tips can then be removed from the main crop or plant. The cutting of the explant has to be carried out very carefully. And the explants have to be very small. Uh, the growth of uh, the plant occurs in um, the core area, which is the smallest area of the plant, known as the meristem. Meristem is where cell division takes place. Um, this is the cleanest part of the plant. so. Um, in order for the plant to be clean, you need to cut it to, to a very small size. For contamination uh, in explants, for instance, this, uh, this example, it's uh, fungal contamination. These are quite common because uh, uh, we have uh, in included a carbohydrate uh, source into the medium, which is uh, good for photosynthesis. We actually try and clean this with uh, ethanol or bleach. 70% ethanol and uh, the bleach con concentration actually uh, depends on the crop or the size of uh, the explant. In cases of bacterial contamination, that's where we use a um, dissecting microscope to actually dissect to the smallest or the core uh, part of the plant, which is the meristem, the growing part of the plant. We need to use a microscope to do this because one, the meristem is usually very small in size, approximately 2 to 5 millimeters, and so we cannot see it with our naked eye. And two, the meristem is uh, very delicate and is uh, very easily damaged. Once the explant is placed in the container, it can then be taken and stored in one of the growth rooms with the others. So we now have a better picture of how plant tissue is kept in a gene bank. But what happens to all of them? The plant can't stay in the same container in the same media forever. Uh, the plant will eventually use up all the nutrients and the plant will die. So this is why it's important for us to subculture and place on fresh medium. When countries uh, request for plants, we usually have to make the plants grow quicker. So in doing this, we subculture more often and we place it on a uh, on a medium known as the multiplication medium. CBECT uh, helps farmers in the Pacific to grow different varieties of crops that uh, can help farmers produce crops despite uh, any changes in the climate. The small size of the plant tissue containers makes distribution across 22 countries in the region quite easy. They are free from pests and diseases that could spread across fields and ultimately affect food security. This is because all plant material is pathogen tested for viruses before it is distributed from CPAT. This is the job of a Mitsuko.
tissue culture technique basically removes most uh, pests and diseases. Uh, pests, by mean uh, insects, are removed. Uh, fungal infection is usually seen on the media, and to some extent, bacteria is removed since we cut it down to a very small size. But viruses, since viruses are small, so small that they cannot be seen under a microscope, they are very accurate and sensitive uh, machines within this uh, virus indexing lab. Some countries might have viruses, other countries might not have their virus. So we do not want to distribute these viruses. We want to distribute clean planting material so that it is used by the country. It's quite amazing to note how thousands of living, growing cuttings can be cultivated in small rooms. Just think how big the field would have to be if you're conserving all these plants in a field gene bank, which is what used to happen. But field gene banks are vulnerable to climate extremes, pests and disease attacks. And these, protected from climatic extremes, as well as pest and disease outbreaks, grow to become an important source for farmers across the Pacific, who look to produce crops that are not only more resistant to harsh changes in the environment, but also yield better quality and taste. Some of the accessions in CPACT have been nutritionally analyzed and have high content of carotenoids. You can tell this because the flesh is yellow to orange in color. High carotenoid level in food is good for your health. With the assistance of the CPAC staff, we round up our short tour with a greater understanding and appreciation of how a small deposit in a gene bank goes a long way in helping ensure that our food and nutritional security is safeguarded despite the many changes happening around us.